Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's topics include Diablo 4 briefly appearing on the Battle.net launcher, Cyberpunk 2077 being leaked and streamed ahead of release, a slew of action RPG updates, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description below, but Right before you skip ahead, just a quick reminder to ring that sub notification bell to be alerted to new Saturday episodes and stay up to date with gaming news highlights. Now before we move on, just a quick word from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. As you folks know, I built my new website Riker.com with Squarespace, and all it took was a few minutes to get it updated with all of the Diablo 3 Season 22 relevant material. On that site, you can find a repository of all of my build guides, all neatly categorized, easy to find, and building the site with Squarespace was incredibly easy. Just recently, a family member of mine asked me to update a website I had made from them years ago using a different website builder. And as I logged in and looked at the back end and saw all the updates I have to do and the plugins I have to fix and seeing just how unuser friendly everything is and remembering how it took me two months to make a website that would have taken me two days to make with Squarespace really made me appreciate how easy it was to make my site and maintain my site with Squarespace. A Squarespace website just maintains itself. No updating needed, no fussing with plugins, and it's easy to make any kind of website. Whether you want to make a portfolio website or a website for your gaming clan, there's tons of templates that look great, and Squarespace is offering my viewers 10% off your first purchase with them. Just go to squarespace.com slash Riker, or click the link in the video description to sign up and start building your online presence. That's squarespace.com slash R-H-Y-K-K-E-R, or use code Riker to get started today. Let's kick off the news by talking about Cyberpunk 2077. After multiple delays, the game's December 10th release date is coming up. But after waiting so long for it, it feels a little surreal to think that it's actually happening. And I personally have been expecting word of another delay. But some recent leaks suggest that the game will indeed be releasing on the 10th. It started with a leak posted to Reddit of a physical copy of Cyberpunk 2077 for the PS4. According to the Redditor who posted it, just gonna send it 90, quote, the game felt pretty heavy. I know it has two discs and from what I saw, a couple goodies inside the case. I couldn't get a look at those, unfortunately. Furthermore, it seems someone got a hold of the game and streamed about 20 minutes of gameplay, which now appears to have been scrubbed from the internet. People who did see the footage, however, say that it was on PS4, that it showed the game from its original opening scene. And while it was originally streamed on YouTube, it seems like that was taken down. It was then made available as a backup on Google Drive. That was taken down. And there allegedly was quite a bit of pop-in visible in the footage. Pop-in being when something just suddenly pops into view, be it a texture or a model or something, as opposed to loading in more gradually, more invisibly. But it should be noted that this would be a pre-day one patch version of the game. While I don't think it's a good practice, virtually every game these days launches with a day one patch. That is to say, when they're making the masters, when they are putting the game onto discs and then sending those out, they keep working on the game, fixing some final bugs, adding some final polish, such that when the game releases, there'll be a day one patch that they have ready to go to add that extra little level of polish. We also got this week some official PlayStation 4 gameplay footage, about seven minutes of it. I'll drop a link to this in the video description below. And in its investors call, CD Projekt Red assured its investors that yes, the game definitely is launching on the 10th. And we also learned during the call that while the original plan was to reveal some of the game's DLC before release, due to the delays, they're now planning to wait until after release before talking about Season Pass, DLC, all that kind of stuff. And as a reminder, we know from the past that Cyberpunk will have no less DLC than The Witcher 3, which had two story expansions adding 30 hours of gameplay and 16 other pieces of DLC. In other news, Mike Laidlaw, the former creative director of Dragon Age, has established a new game studio called Yellow Brick Games. The studio currently has 15 staff members, consisting of veterans from BioWare, EA, and Ubisoft, who have worked on Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Watch Dogs, and Assassin's Creed. As for Mike Laidlaw himself, he was lead designer on Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, he was creative director of Dragon Age Inquisition, and during his 14 years at BioWare, he also worked on Jade Empire and Mass Effect. 
Here's to hoping that we see some of that old Bioware magic brought to this new studio. On to some action RPG news, starting with Path of Exile. The devs released their upcoming content schedule, which will include three events taking place in December. On December 4th, we'll begin their one-week Mayhem event. On December 11th, we'll begin their one-week Endless Delve event. Then on December 18th, begins a three-week Heist Flashback event. And this all leads up to January 7th, when they'll have their 3.13 announcement live stream. This is announcing their new expansion. On January 11th, the current Heist League will end on PC. And on January 15th, the new expansion 3.13 will launch on PC, followed by a January 21st console launch. On to some Wolson news. You heard me. Wolson and news in the same sentence. After a long period of radio silence, we got a blog post about upcoming content for Wolson. Quote, We will soon be releasing our first chronicle for Wolson, Lords of Mayhem. Chronicle 1 Blood Trail is our first free content update for Wolson, and it includes gameplay improvements and new content. More details about the content of this update will be shared as we approach its release. With Chronicle 1 Blood Trail, we also wanted to make a complete reset of the economy. Therefore, characters created before the release of Chronicle will be moved to a separate game mode called Legacy, and they will not be able to interact or trade with characters created after the release of Blood Trail. They will, however, still be able to interact or trade with the other Legacy characters. The devs finish by saying this update is only the beginning of a new Wilson's journey of a new Wilson's journey and we hope that you will join us for it they're they're French it's it's okay they mean a new journey for Wilson honnêtement leur anglais en général c'est pas mal bon now a couple weeks ago we had mentioned the teaser that they revealed showing this image with a blood trail it's pretty clear now that the blood trail was a tease of Chronicle 1 blood trail and while we don't have any real details now, or even a release date, in the Reddit comments, we saw on the Wilson subreddit someone saying, I honestly can't see it releasing this year. And the community manager Niku spoke up and said, we shall see. So I gleaned from that that they are aiming for a 2020 release. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again, I think Wilson was a game with tremendous promise, botched by a terrible, terrible launch. The game launched with some massive server problems, bugs, and some balance issues, and it took them a couple more months to get the game into a solid state, but by that point, the damage unfortunately was done. Lots of people were very hyped about the game. They tried the game, they got a bad first impression, and they didn't come back. This first content update is their first real opportunity to make a second first impression. This is the content update that could potentially save the game. I look forward to seeing the contents of this update. I do hope for the best for Wolson because we need more quality ARPGs in the genre. In other action RPG news, upcoming action RPG Last Epoch shared a teaser trailer for their upcoming patch. Patch 0.8.0 will see the launch of the game's final class, The Rogue. In this trailer, they also revealed their new logo, which is looking really slick. Their old logo was cool as well, but this is a really nice improvement. More modern, more professional looking. Patch 0.8 will be releasing on December 4th. And with this patch, dual wielding is introduced into the game. To quote from their forum post, One of our pillars of design is class identity. Introducing different dual wielding options for each class is another opportunity for us to make each class stand out from one another. The Primalist will be able to brandish an axe or sword in his offhand. The Rogue can use either a sword or dagger in her offhand, and Sentinels and Spellblades will have access to swords in their offhand slots. Dual wielding will be enabled via a passive point investment. None of these restrict which one-handed weapons can be used in your main hand while dual wielding. This means that a sentinel can use mace main hand plus sword offhand, but not a sword main hand plus mace offhand. And a question I have for you folks is, what do you think of those restrictions on dual wielding? They stress that it's for class, flavor, and identity. And this is something that I typically do strongly believe in in action RPGs. That is to say, I see that there's generally two approaches to take. Either you want a game in which you kind of build your own class, in which case class flavor or class identity is not important because you're giving the player agency and building their own class effectively, or a game with preset classes that are all very distinct have very strong flavor, and it looks like Last Epoch is leaning towards this second option. Diablo is a classic example of a series that has 
headed towards having very strong class identity. Path of Exile, Wolson are games that are more about build your own class. So sound off in the comments with your thoughts. Also, alongside the launch of Rogues and Dual Wielding, the game is also now getting bows, quivers, and daggers. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Last Epoch is an action RPG to keep your eye on. It's going to be a solid entry into the genre. We don't yet have access to multiplayer in the early access. I'm concerned about that because I saw what happened with Wolson when it launched its multiplayer. There was a lot of bugs with it. It's very challenging to make multiplayer work for an indie studio making their first game or one of their first games have a solid bug free multiplayer experience. So I'm really hoping for the best for the Last Epoch team. I think they're doing some fine work. Again, Last Epoch has my favorite active skill system of any action RPG. I love that they introduced a sort of charm talisman system. Basically in Diablo 2, you had charms, which were items that you kept in your inventory that had affixes on them that benefited you. So imagine something like a ring, but instead of equipping it to a ring slot, it stays in your inventory. Those were cool, but the bad design philosophy there was having to choose between convenience or power. Choosing to sacrifice inventory space in order to gain more power and thus just creating a more frustrating experience for yourself, meaning you have to go back to town more often because your, your inventory is getting smaller and smaller because it's cluttered with charms. Now, Diablo 3 originally was going to have charms, and they were going to have a talisman system, which was a separate inventory just for charms. I loved this idea. For whatever reason, they canned it. They did not go with charms or the talisman system at all. But it made it so far into development that the art asset for the talisman was actually data mined. It's in the game files. And now Last Epoch, either by coincidence or by intent, has taken that idea and implemented, and I really Enjoy it. On to some Torchlight 3 news. The devs have revealed their upcoming Snow and Steam content update, which will launch on December 15th. It will include winter-themed pets and fort decorations, new legendary gear, improvements to the endgame system for Zeer's Dungeon Challenge, a rework to the Forged class, fort updates, transmog, pet enhancements, bug fixes, and more. The game is also currently 40% off on Steam due to Black Friday sale, I believe. Torchlight 3 is a fun ARPG. It might not be the best ever, but at 40% discount, I would really consider it. You can check out my full review and overview of Torchlight 3 over here. And that'll take us into Diablo news. According to a recent posting on Reddit, Diablo 4 appeared on the official Blizzard Battle at Launcher, but without the option of downloading. The game was promptly removed. But Redditor Azimuthus took this screenshot in which we can see that a decryption key was required in order to download the game. And it was listed as Fenris Vendor and Fenris Vendor 2. And of course we know that Fenris is Diablo 4's internal project name. And these names, Fenris Vendor and Fenris Vendor 2, corresponds to previous data mines of the game files of the servers that we suspected were versions of the game being made available for download for employees working from home. And the most likely explanation for this appearing in the Battle.net launcher is just an oop see that this is intended just for Blizzard employees. This isn't something that is gearing up for a beta or anything like that. But some people have been speculating about whether or not come BlizzCon, Blizzard will somehow make some demo of the game available. I personally think that's unlikely, but it's certainly not outside of the realm of possibility. On to some Diablo 3 news. Season 22 of the game launched last week, and on launch night, at least on NA, the servers were struggling. It's probably been the least smooth launch for a new Diablo season in quite a while. What isn't terribly uncommon is, at the very start, the first few minutes, there's some issues as people are trying to all load in at the same time. But this issue persisted for at least a couple hours into season start, where people were having trouble getting into games. And it's possible that this issue was exacerbated by the fact that a new leveling method available only in Season 22, where you use your Shadow Clones to level for you, to kill everything for you, involves remaking the game a lot more often than people typically would, so it's possible that was added stress on the servers, along with just the Shadow Clones themselves, sort of acting as additional players in a game, adding more load, 
This is speculation. I am not a programmer. I'm not a server architect. But something must have been causing it that wasn't causing it in the past. In other Diablo news, we have a new community manager added to the Diablo team, Tom Powers, aka The Hooli. And lastly, I wanted to direct your attention to this fan-made 3D rendered bust of Mephisto by Kevin Cassidy, senior character artist at Roundhouse Studios which I believe is under Bethesda. His entire portfolio is outstanding. He did Diablo a month ago, but after seeing the Heroes of the Storm rendition of Mephisto, all I can say is this is the Mephisto we deserve. And that is going to wrap up this week's video. But do be sure to have checked out last week's video in which we discuss a new Diablo 3 resource site that is a must-see for all Diablo 3 players. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.